Hey, this is Lou Mangiello from WDW Radio, and you're listening to the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. Let's do this. The Tedges this week continue all the way to episode 440 of the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. I don't have a skull. Or bones. Hey, grab my butt. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Five Ish Fan Girls podcast. So glad you joined us. Let's start off like a dirk with the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. Percy in Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Everyone's doing okay. Yes. I guess we'll find out after the fact if we sound okay for everybody. Yeah. Well, so. Unfortunately, we have lost our access to Zoom for the time being. Hopefully, we can rectify that sooner rather than later. But in the meantime, we are back to Skype. Yep, so. Yep. so any any weird sound system? It, it's Skype being Skype. Although hopefully yeah. in the interim when we haven't been on Skype, maybe it's made some improvement. That's what I said the other day, but I'm not I'm not holding out hope because it's still Microsoft and That is true. That they is are true. just like but we, Like are we, we gonna have a what? are we gonna have a a bones day or a no bones day? Yeah. <laughs> For the TikTok folks that understand that reference. Uh, so, yeah. And then hopefully everyone's doing okay after our little week off. Mm -hmm. Everyone's patience while I went and partied with Metallica. Yes. Those pictures. And when I say partied awesome. with Metallica, I partied with you Metallica. You partied with Metallica, yeah. So. <laughs> A good time. Yeah, so yeah. pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, knock on wood. Right now, I'm currently scheduled to uh, return to uh, Set Lusty Bruce to talk yet again about Metallica. So nice. Uh, when we get around to recording that episode with Jesse, and he puts it out, you'll yes. be able to hear all about my shenanigans mm -hmm. in Detroit. Yes, but not Looking just forward to it. Not just Metallica, although it's you know ninety percent Metallica. I also found a TARDIS. I saw that. I was yeah. like, oh, sweetness. <laughs> me want. I know. I can't be here. Here. It's not just a TARDIS. It's a it's a lending library. Library. TARDIS. So no, it's, 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 it's got books on the inside. Side. Yes. Yeah. Which which fits so well with our last episode that we did. Mm -hmm. I know. That made me happy. It's like I'll, I've got one of those little lending libraries, but it's like the size of like a bird, uh, an over, you know, slightly oversized birdhouse. Like this is mm -hmm. just, it's a full scale TARDIS. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to arrest myself to this TARDIS here and uh, yes, sit please. and read and not be. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll, just, I'll just step inside and arrest myself and uh, my punishment is I have to read. Yep. All, all the oh, things. dear. Yes. <laughs> Although you might get hungry because there were a lot of cookbooks in there. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. Coming soon to a feed near you, set listing Bruce. Yay. Uh hopefully get to hear that sometime probably next month. So yeah. I will let you know. Uh, so, but we do need to do the no, ne nose, <laughs> news, <laughs> off news one week, knows. and look what happens. Uh, <laughs> gotta do the news, um, and, uh, unfortunately I have some 10 o'clock news, and this is, okay, this is really, like, it's sad, but at the same, if this is really weird, at least for me. To have somebody's death that ends up on sites like E and TMZ 
and people and websites like that, you know, where like whenever you have a celebrity death, that it's like, wait, I know this. I knew this person. <laughs> and some of the pictures that they've been using for the articles are, are some of the people in some of the pictures with him are people I know. So mm -hmm. this is kind of weird. <laughs> right. In a way. It's just like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, it's like with some celebrities, like you feel like you know them. I actually knew Peter. Like we were Facebook mm -hmm. friends. We saw each other semi regularly at usually pop con. So it's like this is kind of odd. Um, really? But it's it's also you know it's also unfortunate. Um, Peter Spellows, uh, who uh, I interviewed. All the way back on episode 189. So if you want to go back and listen to that, you can hear my conversation with Peter, um, which was PopCon 2018-ish, I think. So um, he Sounds has... About right? Yeah, he he has passed away at the age of 69 due to, due to cancer, unfortunately. Uh, um, so, um, but yeah... Um, uh, he was diagnosed earlier in the summer and, uh, pancreatic cancer. Um, oh. and it was stage three at the time when he was, uh, diagnosed and they've had a, a GoFundMe going to try to raise money to help with his medical expenses. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he went into treatment right away, but unfortunately his, he just, it just did not respond to the treatment. Um, the way we would have liked. So they ended up putting him in, in hospice fairly recently just to make him comfortable. Um, yeah. and he, he passed away early yesterday morning, Sunday morning. Um, so, um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that the, the money that was raised will go to any outstanding bills and likely, um, you know, e expenses, uh, for his, uh, his, uh, you know, uh, I guess his, his kind of brother or cousin or something, uh, that said he's going to be cremated. So, but that, that still costs money. Uh, right. So, right. Their funeral expenses or. Are... Yeah. Yeah. Those expenses that come with that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. This is. sucks. Yeah, it, I mean, it was very heartwarming to see all the, the, the posts, both from people I know and then people he knew from, you know, his time before he moved here to Indy. Um, you know, he was a, an East Coaster for the longest time, but, uh, you know, it's expensive out there. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. In that part of, in that part of the country. And he had people here that, you know, were willing to, you know, he had, uh, you know, his improv classes he taught here. He had Breakfast Anytime, which he helped launch, which is the, the improv group, which performs at, at things like PopCon and other conventions. Um, he was helping out uh, at a local high school that one of his, uh, you know, students worked in the, you know, theater department. So he, he was, he was not moving here just. Yeah, just to save a, a few bucks, but he had, you know, people that he considered family here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the last time I saw him was at last year's PopCon, I think. Um, and, um, you know, he was not as mobile, uh, but, you know, he's up there in age. You know, uh, he lived a fairly a uh, busy busy life um but you know he was always he was in good spirits you know he was always you know asking people how they were doing and that sort of thing you know he on the surface could look kind of gruff but really he was just a big old teddy bear on the inside mm -hmm. always ready to crack a joke and depending on the audience sometimes the jokes might be inappropriate but <laughs> Know your hey, audience. Such as, yep, such <laughs> as it is. Yeah. He knew his audience. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh Sometimes you need those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, his, 
his legacy will live on through Breakfast Anytime and uh, the members of that and his other students, improv students. And then obviously, of course, his his acting work, uh, you know, he was on the, he was a, a voice, a regular, semi-regular voice in the Transformers cartoon series, Robots in Disguise. Uh, he was the voice of Skybite. Oh, nice. Very cool. Yeah, he's in Men in Black too. Um, you know, if you're a, 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 a fan of the the Nightmare on Elm Street, he is in Freddy's Dead: The Final Nightmare. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, he's a really cool guy, and you know, we we're all better for for knowing him. And unfortunately, you know. Going forward, PopCon is not going to quite be the same without him, but yeah, hopefully we'll find a way to to honor uh, yeah. his co- his contribution. So sounds like an awesome dude, and I'm yeah. sorry to hear of his passing. Of course, thoughts and prayers yes. go out to his loved ones, those who knew him, mm-hmm. and uh, God bless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Once again, cancer stinks. <sighs> yes. Right. Cancer sucks. All right. Well, let's move on to happier news, especially now. Written in pencil, of course. The actor yes. <laughs> strike is now over. Yee-hoo! So we can go back to people promoting things and uh, working on things. So not that I didn't mind some of the other stories that they told, but it's just like, all right, now we can hear yeah. the irons in the fire. Yeah, Yay! it's like they were like, the strike is over, and all of a sudden my Facebook feed was all like promoting this, promoting that. You know, hey, I got this new yeah. movie, I got this new TV show, I got this new book. Kevin Bacon's dancing to Footloose in a barn. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me like he hasn't been sitting on that, that one for a while. <laughs> yeah. He was ready. <laughs> uh huh. So uh so we got our first look at the next entry into the Ghostbusters franchise with Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. So mm-hmm. with Paul Rudd because everybody loves Paul Rudd. Uh-huh. And the other familiar faces, both old and new, that have now become part of the franchise since yeah. Afterlife was released. So, uh-huh. um, but yeah, just oh, just any time I hear the siren of the of oh. Ecto One, there's just a, uh-huh. it's like the sound of the TARDIS. There's just certain yes. noises you're just like. Mm-hmm. Ah yes, uh-huh. I love that sound. Yes, <laughs> we got that noise that. makes me happy. <laughs> so or just, or just the pleasant hum of the firing up of the, yeah, packs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. So that is due out next year. Um, and speaking of the TARDIS, um, this yes. past Friday was uh, Children in Need oh. Day. Yes. So, in anticipation of this coming Saturday's first uh, full episode of the return of David Tennant as the Doctor, we got a nice little bit mm-hmm. uh, thing sketch uh with with david Tennant's 14th doctor and um some certain uh yeah someone certain certain someone in his uh pepper pots uh, yeah and <laughs> the whole internet is going bonkers because of said certain someone is not in a certain um apparatus He's not in his- He's not in his house. That's because he. That's thing. because of the timeline. He hadn't gotten exactly, there. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. I'm just like, 
guys, we don't like, know where exactly. Were you China not paying? Thing. Where it's like, like were you not attention. paying attention? Yes. This is I literally. Think. This is literally the genesis of yes. the Daleks. Daleks. Like yes. the name Dalek hadn't even been thought of yet. They didn't have names he yet. Was using Collins. He yes. was using Collins. This was how. This is how yeah. early in the Dalek timeline this is. So, yes. Like, I, I think somewhere between reaction. this and the Tom Baker genesis of the Daleks, Davros yes. does end up, end up in a galactic wheelchair. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna get there. Yeah. yeah. I think people are upset at the reaction from a certain showrunner, and some of his um, commentary toward the fans is kind of like, okay, you could have just said. It's in a different part of the timeline. He's not that. He's he hasn't, you know, changed his his biology yet, and mm-hmm. you know, kind of. I, I'm not not a fan of the whole. Oh, you idiot fans! Just, just take you know, you just have to like it, sort mm-hmm. of thing. Or you know, I, I'm. Uh, I, 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 I wish I wish he hadn't have responded in the way he did, because that just sort of puts a that that puts a uh, a damper on the entire proceedings. Mm. But like you said, Holly, it it could this could be a different part of the timeline, and this could be you know the genesis before the genesis. So mm-hmm. and that's fine. Well, and I was it's thinking just, too. It's just like it's okay, like that, knowing that, this is you give that explanation, please. That that's it. That's all it has to be. And then knowing it was the children in need, I'm just like, okay, are we like hopping in? And this is like he landed on the TV screen, and this is it, it, this is the writer. But then I'm just like, no, that's Davros's voice. So this has got to be yeah. <laughs> early in the timeline before everything. Mm-hmm goes here here come the Daleks. Right. I mean, like, okay. they, I mean they did in general they do the children in need stuff can uh-huh. be considered canon, but you also gotta figure children what was it was it children in need or red nose is curse of the fatal death. I think uh-huh. red nose was curse of the fatal okay. death, but I could be wrong. Yeah. So it's like I you're not know, supposed to I take mean- them too seriously mm-hmm. the, the red nose and, and children in need specials so I, yeah. I love how we I love how oh, we get the yeah. mythology of how the Daleks wound up the plunger yeah <laughs> <laughs> oops geez Doc let's see you set London or yeah. some part of London on fire and now this okay your track record can't take you anywhere, can we? <laughs> I well, I mean, all things considering, going from a going from a sh- you know sharp, pointy thing to a plunger, I think is uh, we all benefit from. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. honestly. Oh, so. oh yes, yeah. We we can skip the warm stabby hugs this time. Yeah. 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 Oh. So. No. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but, um, uh, connected children in need, humble bundle. Oh, yes. Of course, they would do this when I'm like, you know, trying to buy like Christmas presents for other mm-hmm. people, not stuff for myself. And this <laughs> is quite the deal. What yeah. is the deal for what yeah. you are getting? Third, yeah, you Hannah. can get all 36 items for 25 bucks. Yeah, and, and that, some of those role-playing game manuals are like 20, 30 bucks a pop digitally. I mean, even I mean, you're talking like big finish audios and not like that too. Yeah. older big finish either. Uh-huh. You're talking like David Tennant, Dr. Brand, big finish. So, yeah. You know, Diary of River Song. So those are yep. like this. If you went to big finish, you'd be paying like full price, even just for oh, digital yeah. download. So mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So yeah, this is it's a it's a really good deal. It's just oh, uh-huh. I didn't have to be going into the holidays. 
So it's, it's that it's Black Friday. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Now it's like Black Friday week. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because I, I see like everybody. Even I even fixed stuff at Walmart earlier today, and they're like, "Hey, yeah. we've got Black Friday deals." I'm like, "It is Black Friday," and I wasn't here for that anyway. But, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. No, I don't you know? Don't you know? Week. Walmart on when on uh they started Black Friday la- la- was it last Wednesday when they wear pink. Uh, so I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, pretty soon in the whole month of November is going to be pretty much a Black because everybody Black everybody's wanting everybody's money. So yeah, but the humble Never. bundle as of we're recording this is still valid for more than is still going to be available for more than two weeks. So. You still got so, sixteen days and some change. Yeah. To uh So if if you need to wait for next paycheck or or something along those lines, mm-hmm. you got time. So mm-hmm. Yep. So and it go, and it does go to help children in need. So Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good cause. Good collection it's a really good humble bundle Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. Uh, it's it's awesome when humble bundle has a has a a big finish component because it's like oh i need that Mm -hmm. one i need that one and i already have this one but it's part of this Mm -hmm. yeah because that's how i a few years back that's how i was able to get the dalek empire oh yeah Mm-hmm. They had that with David Tennant pre tenth Doctor, and it's just like, ooh, so that's, that's a fun series. I, I listened to it, it a is. few years back, and oof, it fun. is. Oh. Well, anyway, go check out that humble bundle. Get some good big finish for for a not very much money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Beat yourself. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like and some of the comic movie. books that they got in there too are good reads as well. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, that, the one thing with Humble Bundle is it is in this case everything is digital. So it's like if you're yeah. somebody who's like, I really yeah. want the actual book. Sorry. In yeah. the past, sometimes Humble Bundle has done that where you, you pay a little bit more, but still you're paying less than cover price right. for a lot of things. Uh, but in this I, case, well, they're, they're, yeah. everything's just digital. So, yeah, but, but you yeah. You do get the file, so it's not like, oh, it's a Kindle book that could be, you know, removed at any time. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you, you save, you get to save that file to your hard drive. And yeah. Yep. So, so it's, it's, it's not a physical copy, but it's about the, the next best thing to having an actual. Mm-hmm. And Humble Bundle's got a nice little library that, hey, if you accidentally forgot or mm-hmm. something, it, it, yeah. it, somehow it auto, somehow it disappears from your hard drive, you can go to the website and be like, okay, I just need to re-download this, 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 yep. and this from my library. And, oh. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so they, do, they do offer that service. Yes. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can download it and keep it forever and always. Yes. And you know, if the if the internet completely dies or something happens, sweet meteor of death shows up. Which I guess by then we're screwed anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll still have your big finished collection. Yes. Yeah. So, but uh, thank you, Aaron, actually, for letting us know about the humble bundle. He posted that in the yeah. Discord. So yes. All the more reason to join the Discord. Oh yes. So, uh, moving on to uh, Marvel. Like I said, the they were like, the strike is over, and every celebrity was like, here you go, and immediately Ryan Reynolds was like, here you go. <laughs> Deadpool, Deadpool three <laughs> release dates. <laughs> Just in time for Shalane's birthday. Yep. <laughs> so, yes, we well, can now expect, uh, uh, always, write in pencil. Mm-hmm. Uh, just Although in I case. 
<laughs> I think given the year that it's been, um, I'm pretty sure they're gonna they're gonna make sure this one drops because dang, they they need it. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But right now, Deadpool three is slated for July 26th. So there is that. So I am I'm here for it. Hmm. Um, and then, uh, we don't have a release date yet, but we presumably sometime next year, um, or another entry into the Marvel Sony shared Spider-Verse yes. MCU adjacent as Shalane, Shalane and I were talking about it, te- that's, uh, we were saying that Marvel Studios, you know, aka Disney and Sony are tag teaming with uh-huh. the spider-verse i'm like yep that's that's about right so yeah. um okay is a good way to put it yeah yeah so but we got our first look at madam webb mm-hmm. it does look good it does it, i don't know a lot about madam webb I, so i don't no, either but i was I like quite intrigued what I mean. just to, just to see just to see what they show in the trailer because it's like yeah. i know she's you know a spider person Right. What, I, what I understand from the comics, um, I read a, uh, a, a, or I watched a YouTube video with it. Um, what I understand is that he, in the comics, um, was helped Peter Parker by telling him kind of, because like, he could see the future, like it's like the threads, the, the web of time or the threads mm. of time something like that so he could see what was what could be happening and he could make plans based on that and obviously that probably went <laughs> very bad as well as you could expect in yeah. comic book universe yeah you know so it's just kind of eh. so, so that that is that is my limited knowledge on that and i'm sure that someone will chime in when the in the uh, comments or the you know feedback and be like, no, that isn't it at all. What problem? Uh-huh. But, yeah. Well, it really just comes down to you know how much of yeah. of her comic origins and powers and stuff they mm-hmm. they're actually going to be using and where exactly she fits in the Spider Verse. You know, is she in the same universe as? You know, Andrew Garfield's Spider Man or Toby Guire's, or is she in Venom's Spider Verse? Is she in, you know, Morbius's universe? We don't know. So it's like, since so they've, since we've got, you know, our kind of MCU multiverse and then our Spider Verse, and eventually they'll, maybe they'll, they've come, they've crossed over a little with the, you know, Spider Man No Way Home. With bringing in Toby and Andrew, but mm-hmm. you know, it's like because Sony is just like, no, this eight-legged freak is make is making us all the money in the world. So it's like <laughs> we're not giving him up. So it's like Marvel just has to do what they can with the, anything Spider Verse related. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I think it I think it looks really interesting so and you know the bar really got lowered with morbius so really we Mm -hmm. can only go up yeah at least as far as the live action is concerned i know the Uh the tom hardy venoms did okay yeah um you know obviously the animated spider verse have done really well oh yeah um but yeah the the live action spider verse has been kind of iffy so but like yeah, the the bar really dropped after Morbius, so you know, really, Madam Web can really jump over it. <laughs> mm-hmm. so hopefully, see what happens. Yep. So, but until then, we. If you're wondering what to do over your Christmas break, if you happen to have that time off, you can watch What If season two. With starting on December 22nd through the end of the year, we're going to get a new What If episode every single day. So, nine 
straight days of new what if cartoons and i'm so excited because i just i loved the first season of what if so a little i mean obviously with what if you're gonna have characters not being what you expect anyway but it is kind of sad that from here on out we don't have any more chadwick uh it looks like at least in one of the stories it's it's killmonger has taken over mm-hmm. the black panther mantle so um still weird to see black panther not hear chadwick's voice come out yeah <laughs> so it's like i'm so glad that we were able to get what we got with what if season one so uh but yeah it, it looks like it's gonna just be a humdinger of a time with all sorts of craziness so such as what if likes to do so i love about what if it could just be batshit bonkers and you're like eh, it's a multiverse mm-hmm. what are you gonna do yeah. mm. <laughs> ah, so that is it for news on to feedback got some miscellaneous feedback from shalane Speaking up on some of our news and uh, our last topic. So, uh, this is the actors I know from The Boy and the Heron are Jebba Chan from Eternals, Captain Marvel, uh, Florence Pugh, Black Widow, um, and the rest of the. Um, uh, she and uh, Jebba Chan were in a movie together, plus a bunch of other stuff. So, uh, so speaking of Marvel, fan up Blade is going to be R rated. Oh, yes. Blade. Blade has to be our rated. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, given, given how how highly regarded the original Blade was less than Snipes, these Blade mm-hmm. 1 and Blade 2 are, are and they were rated R, I think there would be riots if it was not. Yeah. Yeah. No, Blade, if I mean, the, the whole thing with Blade is he he is pretty single-minded. Yeah. of destroying vampires and therefore does not give a shit how messy it gets. Right. So, well, um, the vampire, but well that too. So it's like I mean, no, nobody really gives a crap, you know, if, if the, the carpet gets dirty. Uh, so, yeah. and there's only so many ways you can kill vampires anyway. So there's a lot of, you know, heads being chopped off among other things. So, Yeah. <laughs> It's a it's a little I mean the is it what the first the first blade movie literally starts with a rave an underground yeah, rave yes. where blood mm-hmm. is coming out of the sprinkler system so yeah yep. it is it is <laughs> not for the faint of stomach yeah no. yeah so these these are not these are not twilight vampires they don't sparkle no. 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 <laughs> the the first the first two blade movies are good the third one me. Yeah. yeah, I've only seen the first two. <laughs> yeah, yeah so have I. I've I might get around to watching the third one eventually. Third just one, to... I, I have been told doesn't count. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 what yeah. I kind of heard. But also, there's part of me that's like ah, completionist, yeah. right? Completionist. You're a little curious. I don't have to own it. Yeah. I just gotta watch it. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Uh, she says, I read that Marvel said it, Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness that Wanda did die. <laughs> yeah, well, they say those things. I don't believe them. Yeah. Uh, so I guess Elizabeth Olsen is done with the MCU. And I would, again, I would put that in pencil. Yeah. So. I, I, I would say air quotes die until we see a air body or an actual Air quotes with very death fine scene. very, very, very fine print at the bottom that says done with the MCU for now. Now, yes. <laughs> just like all the rumors that I've been seeing going around Facebook that, oh, yeah, Robert Downey Jr. is coming back as Tony Stark. It's like, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 I don't even think Rob, I don't even yeah. think Robert came back for what if. So <laughs> I don't think so. I think they had a lot. About, almost work. everybody else did, but not Robert. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they find a really good, good 
whole bunch of zeros onto that paycheck by I think before he even signs on the dot of the line. Yeah. So that's the nice thing about cartoons is you can get people if they sound really believable, you'll, you might not know the difference. So. Yep. So yeah, uh, just to get yeah. Nobody ever really dies unless you're Aunt May in that case. Yeah, or Uncle Ben. In that case, you yeah, I was gonna say Aunt you May actually and do ben die. Um, Sorry, if you're if you're Peter Parker's aunt and uncle, you're definitely dead, unfortunately. But yeah. everybody else is fair game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dead but true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now on to the library and loving books. My favorite books of my childhood were Doctor Seuss, A to Z Mystery, June B. Jones, American Girls. The Boxcar Children. Oh, yes. Yeah. Favorite books of t- teen adult years. Fablehaven, Percy Jackson, Narnia, Harry Potter, Jane Austen, To Kill a Mockingbird, Shakespeare, Hero of Olympus, Jane Eyre, Prince and the Popper. Now, the Dizzy Twisted Tales, where it's not just the Disney princesses, but also not the Disney, not... <laughs> Uh, princess movies like Hercules, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, Pinocchio, Sword in the Stone, Incredibles. Uh, those have only been released outside the U.S. So jealous. I can I can see why because that those also sound like a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the fractured fairy tales are really really yeah, good. Yeah, they're on my list. Disney. Yeah, yeah, they're on my list. So. Uh, so my guilty pleasures during the teen and pre-adult years, Twilight, The Hunger Games, Divergent, City of Bones, and Match. I, I like The Hunger Games. So uh, She gives us a correction. It's not Gemma Chan who's in Little Shop of Horrors on Broadway. It's Constance Wu. I, yes, thank you for that. So I, I've been getting really bad recently with names. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> But as soon as she, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, oh yes, that's right, it's Constance Wu. Because I think Constance Wu is just a little younger than Gemma Chan, so uh, more age appropriate, I think. So, uh, so going back to Marvel Twisted Tales, there's going to be a Marvel What If book coming out next summer. Uh, the title is going to be What If Wanda and Peter Parker Were Siblings. Ooh. That could be interesting. All of them are reason why I need to start reading these books. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you, Shalane. I got some feedback from Aaron. His subject line is shh. <laughs> I love it. To that, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, how much shushing do you actually do on a daily basis, Chrissy? <laughs> Not much. Yeah, not as much as I you mean, might think. No, I uh, sometimes I have to get after the really the really obnoxious teenagers, but they show up like maybe once every couple of weeks. Uh-huh. Well, that's good. Ah, uh, he says, hello, wonderful five-ish hosts. I grew up with a bit of a love-hate relationship with libraries. As a quiet introvert who spent most of my childhood with my nose in a book, you would think that the library was my sanctuary. Here's the thing. My library was staffed with people who seemed to hate being bothered. My school library had a woman who would refuse to help us because we needed to learn to use the card catalog. Meanwhile, my local library was switching to these newfound doodads called computers. It would talk to me like I was the dumbest person in the world because, as an eight-year-old, I was expected to know how these electronic gizmos worked. A lot of times, I found books just by walking down random aisles and, excuse a joke, judging whether or not to read the books by their covers. <laughs> hey, I do that, too. Happens to the best of us. When I got to high school, I was amazed by how different the library staff was. For the first time, I had a small group of adults who were not only willing to help, but knew enough about books that they could give some great recommendations. It was funny because they would give me book recommendations and I would give them movie recommendations. <laughs> During my brief time at college, I had the school library and the next and the next door and next door, the local library. Since I was commuting, I had a lot of downtime between classes where I would rent a stack of movies and watch on my laptop. Looking back, those were some great times. 
It's fascinating to hear your talk of libraries having groups and events dedicated to things like D&D because those activities were never offered when I was a kid. I feel like now would be a great time to be a kid in a library. These days, I simply use the Libby app for audiobooks and the occasional ebook. Take care, Aaron. Hey, that's what those researches are there for. Mm-hmm. That is true. So yeah, I, I'm I'm sort of the same way. My uh my my library. Well, I mean, I kind of talked about it last week or two weeks ago. Um, just didn't have all all the stuff we have now. So yes, now is an excellent time to be a kid in the library. Although you know, the adults have some fun some fun stuff too. So. Mm-hmm. Thanks for the feedback. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you, Aaron. So, <clears throat> moving on to this week's main topic, which I know we're going to hear from Shalane about. Oh, I'm sure we will. Yep. <laughs> And I'm sure she will be surprised because she thought we were done with musicals for the year. <laughs> for uh-huh. the year. Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! But it just so happened that I went to see the Broadway version of the show literally yesterday as we're recording this. So, and Disney in certain places like the, uh, if you play the, um, uh, emoji Blitz game. The bonus prizes were all frozen themed <laughs> recently because of the 10 year anniversary. So I am so sorry if uh, the past you've been working the past 10 years to try to get let it go out of your head. We're <laughs> going to put it back. Just saying. So. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Disney's frozen. Yes. Yeah. Although I, I I heard recently they hinted there might be a Frozen Four in the future. I haven't had Frozen Three yet. Well, yeah. that's because they've already pretty much said that a Frozen Three is all practically a yeah. given. Yeah. Uh, but then they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just you know mention that there's probably gonna be a fourth one as well." So yeah, so anyways, yeah. There we go. I mean, so considering frozen. considering the di- Walt literally since the late thirties has been one, you know, cause obviously we've got, you know, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, all based off of classic fairy tales, the snow queen or ice queen, you know, depending on your translation, uh, is a Hans Christian Andersen story. Mm-hmm. And all the way back, like, you know, a, a few years into the exist, you know, you know, a decade into the Disney Brothers studio existing, um, Walt has wanted to do a version of the Snow Queen as an animated feature and just couldn't do it because they didn't have the technology, you know, to get the look that they wanted. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, they were going to do... Uh, at one point, they talked about collaborating with um, MGM... And MGM would do a live action movie based on Anderson's life. And then Disney would animate the fairy tales. Um, you know, the, they, and they eventually just uh, shelved it. <laughs> and um, it kind of got a second win during the Disney Renaissance. But it just, it, it still didn't. You know, it still didn't quite, um, you know, take off. They got, you know, the Disney Renaissance, it kind of went, you know, it was a great time, but then it went, and Disney was trying to dig themselves out of a hole, and (laughs) and then bada bing, bada boom, it's, you know, the 2010s, and... They were like, hang on a second. Let's try and give this thing a shot. So, but, you know, and, and even, even as late as that, the script that they had was closer to 
the Hans Christian Andersen version where the Snow Queen, it, you know, Elsa was the villain. Yeah. It, because the, you know, like a lot of these fairy tales, the origin version is pretty dark. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're <laughs> there's about a magic the mirror world. created by the devil, and <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, kids getting kidnapped. <laughs> Personally, I love Hans Christian Andersen. I I really enjoy his stories. Yes, they they get dark. That's mm -hmm. none of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is you know kind of weird, but there you go. It was just, it was, it was a, you know, nowadays, you know, we think of like, you know, telling stories to kids just as a form of entertainment. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at one point, you know, stories, telling stories was either a form of passing along actual his history because people mm -hmm. didn't, you know, didn't have the ability to read and write so you well, had to rely also, on. Also didn't have, they really didn't have the time. To that too. You are yeah. trying to survive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know so... you had to rely on the the oral tradition, and then any anything you know, quote unquote fictional or whatever, was meant to have like a moral. It was you know, mm -hmm. it was it was a way of of teaching. The next generation, yeah. good, you know, good and evil, bad. Mm -hmm. you, don't you do, might, don't, you don't might be not naughty remember, children. Yeah, you might not remember a lecture or you know a Sunday school class, but you will remember mm -hmm. a story. Everybody mm -hmm. does, and even to this day, it's like you know, quoting movies and and stuff like that. It's like it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the the, so, yeah. the Snow so, Queen was no different as as far as that that storytelling device was. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, when when Disney was developing it, Elsa was was the villain, and some of some of that is still kind of in there, even with this even with this change there's still kind of nods to you know just how powerful elsa is and how dangerous her her powers can be cuz you know we we see mm -hmm. you know thankfully they were able to save anna the first time she got struck the second time well i mean she still eventually got saved but it got really really dire there um yeah and even though in this case Elsa was not doing it with any sort of malice behind it, both times were accidents. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show just how powerful she was, you know, as a as a as a you know a a, a person with abilities in mm -hmm. this this world that they're living in. So, um, but yeah, once they uh, you know, it got to the point where it was like. Yeah, they started to to work on it, and then they like were still doing adjustments <laughs> to the script. And at one point, they were like, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna give ourselves a deadline here." And it's like, you know, seventeen months after that, quit fiddling with stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> they kind of just had to put their foot down and be like, "Okay." Mm. How is uh, the goal if it's not broke? Don't yes, fix it. exactly. So right. Chris Buck and and Jennifer Lee, Jennifer Lee, who worked on Wreck-It Ralph, um, was um, you know, they they eventually became the the folks in uh folks in charge, and obviously the the Lopez's came in to do the music, and um. No, as as the uh, uh, you know production went on and they were mold, you know, metaphor here, you know, molding it, and then eventually it mm -hmm. became the movie we ended up getting, uh, you know, slightly over a a decade ago. And I will tell you, I 
I vaguely remember when the movie was released, like maybe seeing a commercial or something for it, sure. but it never really caught my attention until one day I, I, I went and had like lunch with my mother and, um, I had been, uh, at, uh, I just started a new job that summer and, you know, filling her in on, you know, what the, the new job was like and everything. And then she tells me about this movie about a reindeer and it's really funny. And you know, a movie, I, I can't say a movie, this is not an indicator that a movie is good, but at least it's visually interesting and telling a good enough story. And the mu I guess the music is catchy enough that mm -hmm. my mom went and saw it in a movie theater and stayed awake the entire time. <laughs> that was like her big selling point on how good in her opinion how good this movie was that she stayed awake the entire time in the movie theater and she loved right. Sven because it reminded her of one of her dogs she had at the time and <laughs> I was like okay lady whatever you say <laughs> and then you know we go to Disney that December and it's just Elsa's everywhere <laughs> yeah it was it was crazy frozen mania and i like i'm kind of like you rachel i i mean i saw the little teaser trailer where it's the um you know it's 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 Sven and olaf and i mean i just like it's a snowman and his reindeer and they're you know goofing around in the snow and i'm kind of like okay whatever this looks I mean, you know, you don't, he doesn't even have the main characters in it. And then all of a sudden you see Elsa everywhere. So when I went and saw the movie finally, I liked it, but I was like, there should be more Elsa in this movie for all of like the, the toys and the costumes and, you know, she's the main person in the marketing. It's like, there's an awful lot of Anna. And I'm kind of annoyed by that, honestly. <laughs> I like Elsa better, personally. Um, but yeah, so it was just, it was kind of a thing. <laughs> and I went and saw it, because I really didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I had listened to any of the music. Um, so, I mean, I, I knew, like, Let It Go was a thing, but I really hadn't heard it i don't know how i i didn't know how i managed to do that honestly i don't um but yeah it was an interesting experience like going because i just went by myself mm -hmm. i just you know went for it um i don't even think i saw it in theaters i think i rented it okay. <laughs> yeah, cause it, well okay i think i saw it like the dollar theater because it, it it would it had been out for a while but i was kind of like eh. it, it was you know it was before i got married obviously and uh, i it was one of those things like i'm not doing anything on a you know a saturday or something or whatever and i was like oh it's at the cheap theater i'll go there <laughs> and yeah yeah, I I enjoyed it. I just wish there had been more Elsa in the, that first movie. And I, <laughs> and I did I did go download the soundtrack. So I was like, okay, the soundtrack the soundtrack slaps. Mm hmm. I I, I like this. Yeah. Then you know before you know it, just let it go was just everywhere. <laughs> you know and. You know, immediately took over the you know every practically every square inch of Disney property. Oh yeah. You know, like I said, you know, you go and just little girls dressed up as Elsa just mm -hmm. everywhere. Eventually, um, at Christmas time, they changed the show. Uh, cause for a while there, at least when I, we were going, um, at Christmas time when they, they decorate the castle mm -hmm. with lights, um, the story was that Cinderella, cause it's 
her castle in Florida, at mm-hmm. least, that she uh, wants uh, to decorate her castle for the holidays, but she can't decide what type of decorations you know, to, to mm-hmm. use. And eventually it's decided that it should shimmer and sparkle like her glass slippers. And that's what the fairy godmother does. So then they, they, the lights that they use on the, on the castle, it looks like it's covered in ice essentially or glass, you know, sparkling glass. But then when frozen came along, they changed it. So now that Elsa is the one decorating the castle using her ice (laughs) powers. Um, And then, you know, they would do, They'd also have like the, um, you know, the the fireworks at night, and that usually has a mix of music specifically written for uh, the fireworks. But then they started a- adding a, a projection aspect to it, and that had Disney music in it. And of course, Let It Go got put in there. Oh, and uh, and then. Um, you know, eventually you could meet Anna and Elsa as characters, and that had ridiculously long lines. And then they rethemed the ride in the Norway Pavilion at Epcot from the Maelstrom to now it's a Frozen themed. Uh, and you can meet Anna and Elsa over there, and uh, on some of the cruise line itineraries you can meet Anna and Elsa that's where I got to meet Anna and Elsa's when we uh our cruise uh to Alaska appropriate mm-hmm. uh there's even a frozen themed night on the Alaskan itinerary at least I was when I went <laughs> oh my god uh, um, <laughs> yeah and now there's there's an entire frozen section in uh I think the one in is it Hong Kong that just opened in the last like week or something like that. Um, and then the area at Tokyo Disney Sea is due to open next year. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, D- Disney, you know, the, the, yeah, the, fir- the first frozen movie, it just like, you know, took it off. Up. It blew up and they immediately saw what they had and they were like, well, we're going to milk this cash cow for as long as possible. Yeah. And that's not it's not dried up yet. No, <laughs> so no, indeed. we've gotten we a second movie. Too. There's talks about a third and a fourth. Yeah. You know, we got the like, we got the shorts. Mm-hmm. Like today at my story time, I had a little girl who was, who was there in an on a costume and i'm like mm-hmm. okay sure but yeah the dolls and all that and i think and i think this was mentioned in you know the media and, and such at the time but i don't think they've really focused on it so much it's kind of like disney you're good at the fairy tale princess story you know story thing and mm-hmm. you know keep doing that like i i want to say i mean they called it kind of called this the disney revival that started with well Honestly, I'd say it started with Princess and the Frog, even though that one wasn't a hit. Mm-hmm. And then Tangled, I love Tangled. Tangled is like one of my mm-hmm. new, newest mm-hmm. favorite Disney movies. Yeah. Pascal. Just uh, yeah, Pascal. <laughs> you know, and the, the it's like Rapunzel and Flynn Rider are just yep. right on the same level of, you know, just... But they 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 they're kind of like Rick and Evie from the from the Mummy yes. sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Cool thing. Yep, it's great. And then they're like, okay, well, you know, we'll do this. So they do Frozen, and it's it's two sisters. So there's two two protagonists, kind of a villain, but not really. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. They, they took the wanna... the they took the idea of the Disney princess and just tilted it like. 45 degrees. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Like, you still get some of the stuff you expect. You get the I Want song. Uh-huh. You get a couple of I Want songs. I mean, both sisters kind of get their I Want song. You know, Anna's got First Time in Forever. Elsa's got Let It Go. Um, you know, you've got a, yeah. a, a, you know, an animal sidekick for one person. Olaf is kind of, you know, is his own kind of sidekick. He's not an animal, but he's still no. a 
funny sidekick. sidekick. Yep. Yeah, although, all that. Although I'm I'm gonna be the Debbie Downer and just be kind of like a lot a little bit of Olaf goes a long way. <laughs> like, uh, what, what, what they did with him in the second movie, I'm just kind of like, okay, can you stop now, please? Just, just, I'm done. I, I am seriously done. I like, uh, like, over the pandemic, um, the, the lead animator on Olaf actually did those little, those little like minute long shorts mm-hmm. with, all, with Olaf. Is at, at home with Olaf. That's what it was. And posted on on YouTube, and and. Josh Gad voiced him, and or well, he wasn't on YouTube. I can't remember where it was now. YouTube, Disney Plus, somewhere. And I'm like, those were cute. And Olaf actually didn't talk all that much. I'm like, okay, those were fun. I like those. <laughs> but yeah, the the. I was like, I, I get it. You need to have you need to have the crazy snowman to, to to be comical. But I'm I'm, I'm good. We're good. I'm done. <laughs> I like Olaf. But he and I also have very similar feelings when it comes to heat. So, mm-hmm. yeah. He see when he sings about how amazing summer is, I'm totally right there with him. So, oh. it's 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 a long winter every year. <laughs> so. Yeah. But that's just me. So, um, but yeah, I mean, and you've got, yeah, there's, there's comedy, there's, there's romance, there's danger, there's not, I mean, Prince Hans is the closest we get to a villain, but he's not really a villain, he's more just an antagonist, because he's an idiot. Pretty much. Yeah. And the the one like, you have to be more concerned about is the character played by Alan Tut. Tut. <laughs> yeah. You mean the Duke of Weas- Weaseltown? Weasel- Weasel- yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel like, you know, now we've had 10 years to think about this movie and it's been analyzed to death and, and we all know that. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, did you really need a, a like a like a mustache twirling villain in this? Because you have Yeah, but he's so Funny. Hey. So Weasel Weasel Town or, or Hans? Weasel Town. Oh, oh okay. Yes. Weasel Town. And he, he get he gets way more to do and uh, way more uh you know, quote unquote screen time, well in this case stage time in the, the musical version of it. And the entire time that I you know, we were at the, the show yesterday. I was like, like you know, if they if they decided to do like what it, like they've done where they've done like the the live mm-hmm. uh, musicals, like they they done uh, Little Mermaid and they've done Hairspray and and stuff yeah. like that. And I was like, if I was going to fan cast the live version of this, Hans of the Southern Owls would need to be Zachary Levi. Okay. And uh, the Duke of Weaseltown would need to be Michael Sheen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because yeah, Michael I Sheen see, would have fit that, yeah. perfectly mm-hmm. into that role yesterday when I saw it. <laughs> I was like, yep. like, please and thank you. Can we have that happen? <laughs> <laughs> but it's he, he's he, yeah he gets he gets way more to do way more lines and it's he's hilarious i mean you could just tell that the cast in the broadway version at least the cast that, that's currently on tour right now the, that i saw yesterday is they are loving this material mm-hmm. and Anna, both the girl that plays uh, young Anna and then adult Anna, are so funny. Yeah, you know, she, she, they, they really have tapped into Anna is, you know, while she's, I think she's supposed to be like, well, in, in the the short in between Frozen One and Two, 
Anna turns 19, so you figure probably in the first Frozen she's about 18. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, you know, technically she's an adult, but she's lived this very sheltered life, being Mm -hmm. locked up in this castle, not even having her sister to play with because her sister's just like, you know, locked herself away. If anyone's not seen the How It Should Have Ended for Frozen, please do. It's it's amazing. (laughs) It's brilliant. Yeah. I think we were all thinking that. I sure, I mean, maybe not necessarily where she ends up. If you haven't seen it, I'm, I'm going to refrain from spoilers because it's brilliant. Yeah. But it's just kind of like, look, you probably should train her in her powers. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, and if like, you don't know how, find somebody who does. I'm like, you're exactly. in magical... I mean, obviously the trolls know a a thing or two. That might be a good place to start. (laughs) Like, do they know somebody? I mean, in the second movie, you find out, like, oh, the mom is from a a, a culture that knows about all this stuff. Maybe, you know, go talk to them. Mm -hmm. I feel like like this whole franchise is setting it up, like, everyone sucks at talking to one another. Like, Mm -hmm. that that trope, your communication kills. The only like, one who seems really good at communication is Grandpappy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Although then when they get into a song and dance number, it, it, you're, it, you're kind of SOL until they're done. Uh, yeah, true. true. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, just, uh, um, you know, and uh, it, would they, uh, I mean, I know when Disney was first all like, we're going to start doing stage musicals and people are like, okay, what are you going to do? Like, get to you know, like Roger Hammerstein, they got Cinderella. Uh, yeah. so it's like, what are you, what are you going to do? Your own version of Cinderella? You want Snow White? And they're like, no, we're going to do the Lion King. And people are like, wait, what? How are you going to make that a thing? And they managed to pull it off. So then all these years later, they're like, we're going to do Frozen on Broadway. And I'm sure people are like, wait, how's that going to work? And I will be honest with you. I'm still not entirely sure how all of it works. Some of it I I could figure out, some of the special effects. But some of it is just visually. Mm -hmm. They were able to capture what you know the it's a lot easier to pull off in cartoon form because like physics and stuff don't exist right uh, in cartoon universes but you know their their ability to um you know do some of the snow and ice effects and you know elsa's tra- you know transformation costume transformation in let it go and mm-hmm. um you know the the costume slash puppet that they use for Sven is so amazing looking and just has this amazing presence on stage and is also very entertaining to watch and then the (laughs) same thing with Olaf yeah they've managed to to take something that's like well how you can translate this into real life they figured it out Uh and it's a it's a sight to behold and then on top of that you've got the songs that you know all the songs that are in the movie are Mm -hmm. in the the stage version plus new songs several of them are quite catchy when they get to wandering oaken's uh (laughs) trading post and so enough uh there's a whole song and dance number about the uh word that they have for comfort warmth excitement it's called huga which is not how it, you think it would be pronounced when you're looking at it because it's h-y-g-g-e but i oh, guess they yeah, pronounce yeah. it they pronounce it huga and it's this whole big it's, it's like your almost traditional big flashy broadway song and dance number but it's like uh it's all of Wandering Oaken's friends and family get constantly coming in and out of the sauna wrapping towels mm-hmm. and then cover, covering bits with like pieces of pine tree branches. 
<laughs> and doing kick lines is so funny. And just like, constantly thinking about Huga and what's Huga and what's not Huga. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> oh, and of course, you know, let it go, which mm-hmm. every, uh, oh, it's like, ugh, brings tears to my eyes almost every time. I know so many people got so sick of that song really quickly. You know, once the movie came out and it ended, you know, it was all over the place at the Disney parks and in, I mean, commercials and anywhere and everywhere. But I love Let It Go. You know, I'm I'm not much for necessarily the princess I want slash power ballad. But the. What I, what I think is so great about Let It Go is how people can individually interpret it. Mm-hmm. What it, you know, what what does it mean to let go? I mean, for Elsa, it's obviously letting go of the fear. I mean, obviously, she's still very afraid, but she's finding this freedom to finally, like, figure out who she is and what she's actually uh-huh. capable of right and honestly i think it ties really well back to walt and his story you know people thought that he was nuts doing a feature-length cartoon oh, you know yeah. as a film and then people thought he was nuts mortgaging everything to build a you know essentially an amusement park and then people thought he was nuts for doing this and doing that and you know what walt was like forget you i'm not (laughs) concerned about what you think i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try it and if i fail oh well at least i know i tried what you know what Mm -hmm. i felt in my heart was what i needed to do so and i i i feel that you know mm-hmm. deep you know down in my soul the you know, the idea of being fear not just authentically yourself but fearlessly authentic and that's what uh yeah that's that that's my interpretation and in how let it go you know strikes me right. personally so yeah, I mean, it's uh, Let It Go is genuinely a really good song, both in the lyrics and what mm-hmm. it means and in the music. And then you have, you know, Adina Menzel singing it. And I think we can all that too. unanimously mm-hmm. agree. You could go for it. You go from, uh, you know, you go from, you know, defying oh, gravity to let it go. Yeah. And it's just like, <sighs> yeah. Damn, girl. And both, and uh-huh. both have like a similar meaning behind it and mm-hmm. you know yep. luckily one one character ends up a lot better than the other one <laughs> you know the story I mean it. yeah that depends <laughs> if you're okay. talking if you, if you know how wicked ends maybe not so much but you know it's not an easy road to get where she gets no. I will give but, you that so, but yeah, it's that, and that's why I was kind of like, I want more Elsa. I want to know why, like, like what was the whole, like, you know, what was it like being locked away for all those years? How did it, you know, you know what did you do in the day to day? What, you know, did you ever want to learn how to how to control your powers? You know, because we definitely get Anna's point of view in that in that like you know she wants you know she wants her sister she wants to you know let's go you know do you want to build a snowman mm-hmm. and Elsa we just kind of see I don't know she just is sort of just there and not I don't know I just I feel like we don't really get as much of her, about her in the first movie as we as I probably would have wanted to and yes, I know yeah. more comes out in the second movie. That movie's kind of messed up. Okay. But, you know, they got their big their their big power ballads out of it, so Yeah. 
That that is true because I mean, I mean, you look at all the all the the uh, you know the the uh, yeah you know, advertising and everything, and like Elsa's just prominently everywhere. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's her story, yeah. But we don't really get a whole lot and unfortunately in the in the in the musical version they don't necessarily do a whole lot more other than um you know they they actively outright say that Anna and Elsa's parents leave because they're looking for answers mm-hmm. to help Elsa unlike in the movie where it's just kind of like well are you going for two weeks yeah uh-huh uh, Something that they also made sure to do when we got the Frozen storyline at Once Upon a Time. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. It gave us a little something to work with there as well. Um, But, um, yeah, I mean, and we we get, we at least get, not necessarily with Elsa, but just kind of the history of magic Mm -hmm. in Arendelle as a whole in the second movie so yeah it whenever we get the the third and or the fourth um that uh that maybe we can get more into you know it's like you can kind of make the you know if you're if you're uh yeah, you want to take the time to to take you know what they've given us as far as information in the the films and the shorts and stuff. You mm-hmm. can kind of make some connections, like you know, oh, their mother is from these people up in the north that you know some have magic and it's connected to the elements, and you know, so genetically. There's a chance that any children they have also will inherit that same ability. So that's why Elsa has powers and Anna does not. Um, but, um, but yeah, it it would be kind of nice. To, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Learn a, a little bit more um, mm-hmm. about about that. So maybe deep dig more into the history of of Arendelle and magic mm-hmm. I guess that's not necessarily directly related to Anna and Elsa's lineage so just something like how does like how does this work are there other you know other you know magic there people with magic powers stuff like that I don't know it's, it's, it's does it does it go beyond the go beyond the realms of of yeah. where they of where they live? Although, thanks to uh, Sean, those of us that are Facebook friends with Sean uh, of, of traveling the vortex may or may not have seen his post from several days ago. But apparently, um, Shy, his his mm-hmm. granddaughter, was was watching Pocahontas. <laughs> and Shy came up with the head cannon that the, the yes. wind from Colors of the Wind is Gale from Frozen Two. <laughs> so ah. wow. I was like, head cannon accepted. Thank you, uh-huh. Shy. <laughs> yes. I mean, we already oh, know that, that that Frozen is connected in theory is connected to other parts of the Disney universe because, like Tarzan, well, <laughs> yeah, like tar- like potentially Tarzan. Um, and we see, speaking of Tangled, Rapunzel yep. and Flynn Rider in the throng of people walking into yep. the palace when the gates are open. <laughs> so it is possible. Yes, it is. It could be possible. So we're living, we're living in an Avatar: The Last Airbender Disney version. Yeah. World. Well, we do know the princesses hang out to get uh, hang out with each other, and, and Ralph breaks the internet. That is true. So, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, which one's the avatar? I gotta know. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
I just thought that was that was funny. So that is that is like apparently that. apparently it blew Sean's mind when Shy said that. I was like, no, oh, I, I, I head cannon accepted. Thank you, Shy. <laughs> kind of amazing what 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 connections kids make. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, so, but yeah, well, and thank goodness we had we had the the Frozen storyline in Once Upon a Time because that's one of the best half seasons oh. we've had in the entire series. Absolutely, <laughs> it's one of my favorites. That one and Wicked were fantastic. Mm-hmm. They were, and it really they really took the the lore, I guess, of both Frozen and Once Upon a Time, or what could have been, and obviously that came out before the second movie. Um, but it just, they had fun with it, and I'm really glad they did it that way. And I love that they included, you know, the, the actual Snow Queen in in their story. And, you know, she's, she's their aunt. And it, I guess it kind of could, you know, if it if if they stuck with the lore of, of the Frozen movies, it could work. Just you know, because their moms were sisters. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It all it 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 definitely got my brain going as far as like stories and how this all could work and oh sorry stuff like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, and, and the thing is, is Disney did not go to the showrunners for Once Upon a Time. They were they loved Frozen so much that they yeah. were like, "We want to do this as a plot." <laughs> yeah, and obviously there were a lot of stipulations uh-huh. for them being yes. able to do that. Which you know, thank goodness they that they even gave permission. Because at that yep. point, Frozen, well, I mean, it's still a huge thing now, but, oh, back at that point, what was it, 2015? think so. Yeah. That sounds oh, about that, right. Yeah, it was. It was, the four, it was the fourth season, so it was. Yeah. Was it yeah. 2014? Um, yeah. The uh, autumn of 2014. Oh, okay, yeah. So it was, yeah. it was, whoo. It was a, it was at the pinnacle of Frozen Mania, mm-hmm. I guess. So they were like, "Yeah, don't do anything to screw up our thing," and they didn't. They they did it just fine, and the the live action. So you know, when when inevitably it comes around, it comes time for Frozen to get the live action remake treatment. Mm-hmm. So we're just gonna look at we're gonna point to Once Upon a Time and say, "Look, they already did it. You don't need to do it again." Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> And Pretty to, much, and those, yeah. And I mean, to those who be like, "Oh, they wouldn't do that. It's too new. They're doing a live action Moana." Mm-hmm. Speaking of, and Moana of, is newer. Yes. Yes. And uh, that was one of the things after the strikes ended that they started talking about. Oh, hey, you know, Dwayne Johnson wants to get this fast track. I'm like, uh, okay. I don't know how they feel about that. Like, I smell what the rock is cooking. I'm not sure if I'm ready for it. And I'm not sure if I'm ready to say uh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. You know? <laughs> so you might get a really sarcastic thank you out of me. Yeah. More like, uh, no thanks, not now. I, I'm good with the Wait, not right now. I just had a I ate a really big lunch. I'm I'm yeah. gonna be good for a while. Thank you. Please. Yeah, yeah. Thank I'm, you. A, I'm okay. Thank you though. <laughs> we, we we need to let this sit and stew and percolate and proof a little bit more before we uh put too many. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one thing to do the live action of the movies that are you know sixty, seventy, eighty, you know plus years. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yeah, to do a live action Cinderella was not that well, and, weird. Well, and right. that one was different enough that it's like, okay, this is just another interpretation because how many yeah. adaptations right. of Cinderella are there? A lot. All of them. 
<laughs> all the all the adaptations. But, yeah. Anyway, that's well, another, even that's, yeah. Even just how many adaptations are there of the Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella? Yeah. All right. True enough. <laughs> so. True enough. Yeah, I, I, I will, I, yeah, I'll get up on that. Yeah. That, uh, soapbox. Whatever, yeah. but, eh. yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope that that's. I mean, I'm sure it's going to happen at some point in our lifetimes, or right now, it's just like, can we just put can a just enjoy little just pause enjoy nice on, on on the idea of a, yeah, live action Frozen? Let's, how, about, how about we do those sequels first that y'all were talking yeah. about? Yeah. I mean, not, not, yeah. I <coughs> My whole thing was like, oh, they're going to do it eventually, it, it, even if nothing has been announced or approved or mm-hmm. or anything. But it's just kind of like, you're going to do it. Just, just, just stop pretending. We all know it's mm-hmm. going to happen. It's like, what are you, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to do a, a a film adaptation of the Broadway version. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what they're doing for Wicked. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I hope they do that one well. I don't really yeah. know. Yeah. 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 Well, first they gotta finish it, which now they can, now the strike is over. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, funny now that, that now that the strike is over, that uh, hearing from uh, people on the inside, because appara- apparently, like, Wicked was not close to being done, but Wicked's, I believe, is being turned into a two-parter. Why? Uh, I do not know. Well, but apparently, like, Beetlejuice 2 only had, like, a week or two left of production when the strike started, so... Oh, dear. So, it's like, we're gonna get some stuff sooner rather than later now that they're back to it. Yeah. <laughs> But in the meantime, if you need your Frozen fix, you got both films and the shorts on Disney Plus. You can watch Once Upon a Time. I mean, if you want to watch just that season of Once Upon a Time, you can. Mm-hmm. It's on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. They've got the there. You know, Frozen appears in a lot of video games. Some of them are Frozen specific. Some of them are Disney. So it's got multiple like Kingdom Hearts and mm-hmm. you know. Dreamlight Valley and and stuff mm-hmm. like that, uh, you know, board games, obviously the, uh, you know, all the Frozen stuff at the Disney parks, you know, the the ride in Norway in Epcot, you know, you can meet Anna and Elsa, you can do Frozen, depending on which cruise itinerary you're doing. Again, do Alaska. Odds are there's going to be a Frozen night. Uh, where you can see the one hour version of the Broadway musical. Uh, so little on the smaller side, but it gets you, it, it's essentially the Broadway musical, but just with the songs from the movie, they take yeah. out the, the bits that were added just in for the musical. <laughs> so you're getting, you're getting a truncate, a, a one hour live action version of the movie essentially um which is still really good considering they're on a cruise ship and therefore you know limited space and uh that sort of thing um so that's uh you know that's that's cool and then you know if if you have the ability uh the time and and the the finances you can see the actual Broadway version because it's on tour right now. It's here in Indianapolis for another week, I think. And then, funnily enough, it goes to Detroit after this because I saw billboards for it when we were in Detroit. And I was like, hey, look, they're getting frozen right after we do. <laughs> <laughs> so it is on tour. You can go see it. It's really good. It's really, really good. I mean... Chauncey and I always try to do something with a Disney 
connection to it every year just to, mm-hmm. you know, because we're a couple of Disney adults and we're like that. Got to got to keep the, the love alive. But, yeah. um, you know, we can't quite get back to the parks yet. We can't go on another cruise yet because our passport's expired uh, during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, 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 not around to renewing them yet. Um yeah, but we've done, you know, the parks on both coasts. We've been to Marceline, which is Walt's hometown. We've been to the museum in San Francisco. So it's like, we always try to do something with the Disney connection. If it, you know, whether it's Disney or Star Wars or Marvel or, you know, whatever. Um, but this time around, this, this was actually our first Disney Broadway show. So, because we've not seen like, the Lion King, and we've seen like the park versions. Mm-hmm. So, like we we've seen obviously we've seen the the truncated cruise ship version of Frozen. We've seen the trunk, yeah, you know, the the cliffs cliffs notes speed run ver not speed run but cliffs notes version of Aladdin out in California before it got replaced. Um, and uh. Uh, you know, they've got Finding Nemo, the musical at, uh, you know, Animal Kingdom. But again, it's not a full length musical, you know, two plus hours. Uh, so, but there's, I mean, Disney's got several Broadway musicals out there. They got Frozen, they got The Lion King, they've got Aladdin. Uh, they got Mary Poppins, which technically is not Disney IP, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah. so, but yeah, and all this time we've yet to see one of Disney, uh, a Disney Broadway, full Disney Broadway, uh, style show, but now we have, so it was really awesome. Although it, it, it felt a lot like we were back at a Disney park because there were just so many little girls running around <laughs> wearing princess dresses. <laughs> yep. I do have to say it was kind of cute, though. Before the show started, uh, you know, they, they made an announcement. They were like, you know, please turn off your cell phones and blah. You know, please don't take pictures or video, that sort of thing. And they're like, we'd like to thank, you know, uh, thank everyone who is who is here that this is their very first musical or, you know, theater show that they've ever been to. It's a lot of kids. Oh yeah. yeah, for a lot of them, for them, this is probably their first time seeing a, a you know, a full-on stage production mm-hmm. like that, like this. So that was that was really cool. So oh, yeah, it's, it's fun hearing some of the commentary from the kids around us. Yeah, you know, they either have something to say or they have questions. Some of the jokes definitely were put in there because uh, they knew that there would be adults in the, the audience as well. <laughs> Oh, those are fun. Yeah. <laughs> the little girl behind us wanted to know why it was so funny while singing First Time in Forever at one point. Anna is caressing the the uh, chiseled chest of a bust of a man. Uh... <laughs> <clears throat> well. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <clears throat> yeah. Her, her parents were just like, shh, yeah. <laughs> Probably hoping she'll forget. Uh, yeah, we'll be having a conversation in a later 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 near future. There were several, mostly jokes that were, that were definitely written in there, knowing that there are going to be adults who may not necessarily want to uh, sit through a quote unquote children's show. For two hours. <laughs> uh-huh. But, you know, if you want to introduce your kid to uh, live theater, do it with something like this where it's going to be characters they recognize and some of the songs they're going to recognize. Yeah. Not a bad start. Not not a bad start indeed. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I will have to. I told Chauncey this after. I said I, I do have to say I feel a little, um, a little sorry for the orchestra. They're in the pit, you know, right off the, the edge of the front of the stage, because they, 
They were either using chilled fog or actual dry ice fog. So it sits low to the ground, mm -hmm. but it you know helps to give the effect of ice and snow and stuff. Except it would slowly creep forward and then go over the edge of the stage into the orchestra pits. Oh dear! Mm. <laughs> During the show, and I'm like, if I was one of those musicians, I'd be like, I can't see my sheet music. The fog's <laughs> in the way. <laughs> yeah. I don't have this completely memorized yet. I should, yeah. but... Mm. Like, wait a minute. Where's that change that we made in rehearsal yesterday? <laughs> I just, I hope the fog Is that supposed to like, be a short rest or a long rest? <laughs> yeah. I just hope it doesn't condense and ruin the instruments. Ooh, be a problem. Too. Yeah, or they inhale anything. Be like Ooh, some yeah. poor yeah. some poor okay. trumpet players taking in a breath right before they need to blow their horn and like yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fog <laughs> Oh boy. Well good on them. They're troopers. Yeah. It sounds like it was a good time. Mm-hmm. It was. Good. It's always fun to get a little dressed up and go out for a few hours and be like, we're going to the theater! Yeah. Cool. Uh, anything else we want to comment on, discuss? Happy 10th birthday, Frozen, and now yes. I really feel old. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But it's all right. It's all good. It's a good movie. Even if it is. It feels like it's everywhere still to a point. But yeah. The kids love it. And, you know, we, we had our we had our movies that were everywhere when we were kids. So it's yeah. yeah. And honest, and honestly, you know, these days with the the social medias and stuff, like if it really, if you really wanted to compare and contrast, odds are it probably feels like it's everywhere because that's where you tend to hang out as True. the types of groups that something like this would be advertised to anyway. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you were into something else, you could probably be like, oh, Minecraft, it's everywhere, you know. Or something like that so right uh, yeah just you know if it annoys you that much just let it go <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. well, anyway, well if any of our listeners want to chime in on their thoughts on frozen whether it's the movie or the you know phenomenon or anything like that, you can send us some feedback through our email, which is fiveishfangirls at gmail.com You can also visit our website, which is the fiveishfangirls.com That has links to our social media, that also has um, links to our uh, YouTube channel, um, you can look at our uh, show notes, so, you know, links to the things we've discussed here, some other information and stuff like that. And if you comment, we'll also treat that as um, feedback as well. You can, also, you can also support us through our Patreon and our merch shop. That helps, you know, helps us take care of the costs that we incur from podcasting because there are a few. And of course, as always, thank you, thank you for your support, for listening, for anything that you've done to show that you're out there listening and enjoying what we do. It's amazing and you all are fantastic and we love you guys. So if you're celebrating Thanksgiving this week, be safe, mm -hmm. enjoy. Mm -hmm eat a lot of turkey or whatever it is you're having. Just just try to relax. Yep. And be careful if you do any Black Friday shopping because that could be that could be wild. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Just so, remember, as someone who worked retail for 20 years, there is nothing out there that's worth getting injured and or dying over. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. The good news is you can get Black Friday deals online. Uh huh. It's like Comfort I don't want to go out on and, home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of of going out in the cold in the middle of the night. I'm if, like, I just, I'll just chop up. I'm good. If, if you're shopping online or not on Amazon. Check out our wish lists. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. our wish yes. Lists. Yes. Or, you know, it's uh, it's also a time for just, you know, donating to places, uh -huh. too. We've got a PayPal donation link on the bottom of the website. <laughs> just saying. Season of giving, folks. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Indeed. But just... Pleasure. Yep. Alrighty. So with that, we shall sign off for this week. This is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Winter's a good time to stay in and cuddle, but put me in summer and I'll be a happy snowman! <laughs>